Artificial intelligence. Benefits or dangers? Some people say that artificial intelligence will annihilate us as human species. Artificial intelligence refers to computer system capable of performing complex tasks that historically only a human could do, such as reasoning, making decisions, or solving problems. We have to realize that we are still in the very early stage of what artificial intelligence is really capable of. Uh, whether it is increasing ability to recognize our faces, voices, consumer preferences, automation of certain jobs, or development of weapons that operate without human oversight, to name just a few, and is abound on a number of uh, fronts. And we are still in a very early stages uh, what artificial intelligence is really capable of. Can machines think? Can machine think? Alan Turing posed these questions in his famous paper, Computing Machinery and Intelligence. He suggests that the answer to this question, we need to define what thinking is. However, it is difficult to define um, process of thinking clearly, clearly, because thinking is a subjective behavior of human species. Turing then introduced an indirect method to verify whether a machine can think, the so-called the Turing test, which examines a machine's ability to show intelligence indistinguishable from that of human beings. A machine that succeeds in the test is qualified to be labeled as a artificial intelligence. But this solution seems to be questionable and too simple to be true. Tesla and SpaceX founder Elon Musk, along with over 1,000 other tech leaders, urged in a 2023 open letter to put the pause on a large artificial intelligence experiments, citing that the technology can pause profound risks to society and humanity. Before presentation of the algorithm of artificial intelligence, um, just to mention some of the risks of artificial intelligence. So this is automatization, spare job loss, deep fakes, privacy violation, algorithmic bias caused by bad data, socioeconomic inequality, market volatility, weapons automatization, uncontrollable self-aware um, uh, artificial intelligence. In pandemia, we had many devices based on artificial intelligence. Um, for example, during the pandemic, we couldn't enter the workplace without having um, your temperature taken by a machine. The machine reminded you to wear a mask. In the future, a more perfect machine may take your hand and prevent you from entering unless you fulfill its wishes. So let's ask what artificial intelligence is. Artificial intelligence is based on the theoretical models and development of computer system capable of performing tasks that traditionally required human intelligence, such as recognizing speech and face, making decisions, and identifying patterns. In Artificial intelligence is a general term that encompasses a wide variety of technologies, including machine learning, deep learning, natural language processing. At the simplest level, machine learning uses algorithms trained on data sets to create machine learning models that allow computer systems to perform tasks like making song recommendations, for example, Spotify, identifying the fastest way to travel to a destination, Google Maps, or translating text from one language to another one. Um, in Google Translator, for example. And what is deep learning? 
Deep learning is a branch of machine learning that is made up of a neural network with three or more layers. Input layer, where data enters through the input layer, hidden layers, hidden layers process and transport data to another layers, and output layer, the final result or prediction is made in the output layer. These new neural networks attempt to model human learning by digesting and analyzing massive amount of information, also known as a training data. They perform a given task with the data repeatedly, improving in accuracy each time. It's similar to the way we study and practice to improve skills. These deep learning methods um, have very high accuracy rates, up to 100%. Some of the most common examples of artificial intelligence uh, in use today include uh, chat, GPT uses link, large language models to generate text in response to questions or comments posed to it, or Google translations, uses deep learning algorithms to translate text from one language to another, or in Netflix uses machine learning algorithms, algorithms to create personalized recommendation engines for users based on their previous viewing history, or in Tesla uses computer vision to power self-driving features on the cars. Artificial intelligence, machine, machine learning, and deep learning are sometimes used interchangeably by they are each other distinct terms. They are each distinct terms. So, artificial intelligence is a term for computer software that mimics human cognition in order to perform complex tasks and learn from them. Machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence that uses algorithms trained on data to produce models that can perform a variety of complex tasks. Deep learning is a subfield of machine learning that uses several layers within neural networks to do some of the most complex machine learning tasks without any human interventions. The next term we need to understand artificial intelligence is supervised and unsupervised learning. What is the difference <coughs> between supervised and unsupervised learning? The biggest difference between supervised and unsupervised learning uh, is the type of data used. Supervised learning uses labeled training data and unsupervised learning does not. More simply, supervised learning models have a baseline understanding of what the correct output values should be. Here you have an example of uh, principal component analysis as unsupervised learning used by us uh, to analyze cancer pathology. Uh, the data has already been published uh, in order to evaluate the diagnostic value of the Raman biomarkers for mo monitoring cancer pathology. We have applied the principal component analysis and here we can see the score of PCA plot. Without going into the PCA details, it's easy to see that the samples in the figure belongs to one of the two groups, uh, namely the samples in the left and the right uh, separated along PC1. In the left area, there are the almost exclusively the tumor tissues, and in the right area, there are almost exclusively the normal tissues. And this data for uh, breast cancer diagnostics has al already been published. Here we have an example of supervised learning uh, for linear discrimination discriminant analysis. 
uh, this is a linear discriminant analysis for human normal and cancer lung cells. And here also linear discriminant analysis, but applied um, to uh, various types of human brain tumors and breast cancers for the tissue. One can say that uh, uh, principal component analysis can effectively reduce the spectrum to a certain number of principal components that accounts for significant spectral variance, to thus retaining important spectral data while removing background noises. And uh, linear discrimination is also data reduction algorithms, uh, but they are supervised learning algorithms. There are two categories of supervised learning methods, regression and classification methods. The simp simplest regression method is linear regression, uh, known also as ordinary last squares. Uh, we remember this term from school. Uh, linear regression um, is perhaps one of the most well-known and best understood algorithms in statistics and in machine learning. And here the formula from which we calculate the standard deviation uh, and we remember these formulas from school. A linear discriminant analysis uh, is algorithm uh, uh, this algorithm projects the data onto a lower dimensional space in a way that the class separability is maximized and the variance within the class is minimized. So the, a little bit more details, for example, we assume that the uh, data are normally distributed, but generally this is uh, one of the simplest uh, algorithms uh, for uh, supervised learning. This figure compares the supervised learning models on the factors mentioned previously and shows the benefits and uh, uh, limitation of each of the other methods. We should also mention so-called cross-validation. I am not going uh, to present in detail this cross-validation procedure, but for, for, the, for the people who are interested in artificial intelligence, I only um, name this important procedure, cross-validation. Uh, of course, artificial intelligence is a powerful tool for scientific research. Of course, we can ask, can machine think? Uh, can uh, artificial intelligence do fundamental research? Uh, how does in artificial intelligence accelerate fundamental research? Um, the first question, can machine think? The goal of artificial intelligence is to uh, enable machines to mimic human thoughts and behaviors, including learning, reasoning, predicting, and so on. Um, can artificial intelligence do fundamental research? Of course, uh, I, um, artificial intelligence coupled with machine learning techniques is uh, uh, impacting a wide range of fundamental sciences, including mathematics, medical science, physics, chemistry, uh, and so on. And uh, Artificial intelligence accelerate uh, fundamental research. New research and applications are emerging rapidly with the support by uh, artificial intelligence infrastructure, including data storage, computing power, uh, artificial intelligence algorithms and frameworks. So once again, numerous applications of artificial intelligence have had a profound impact on the fundamental sciences, industrial manufacturing, human life, social governance, and cyberspace, especially in medical sciences. Um, let's, uh, let me mention um, 
AI doctor based on electronic medical records, um, public health, the outbreak of detection and health, uh, QR co codes for COVID-19, biomarker discovery with artificial intelligence, image-based medical artificial intelligence, wearable devices for surveil surveillance and early warning uh, of life parameters, or artificial intelligence either drug discovery. And now a few words on how uh, artificial intelligence transforms medical practice uh, in cancer, because we are interested in our laboratory in cancer diagnostics. In our laboratory, laboratory of laser molecular spectroscopy, we use uh, different methods um, that apply artificial intelligence, namely Raman spectroscopy and imaging, infrared spectroscopy and imaging, uh, time result femtosecond spectroscopy, conventional bio, uh, molecular biology, or nano-infrared um, imaging with superb resolution combined with atomic force microscopy. And we study structure, metabolism, epigenetic, immunology, and genetic processes. Now we will show some illustration of artificial intelligence application of Raman spectroscopy and Raman imaging for cancer diagnosis in our laboratory. We study breast cancer, brain cancer, uh, lung cancer, and many others. And uh, in some cases, we have a very good patient statistics. For example, for breast, we have uh, 250 patients. Um, uh, here, one can see the cross-section through the cancerous duct. And A shows the Raman image. B shows the microscopy image, C shows the histopathology image, and D, this is the spectrum, Raman spectrum uh, for this uh, cancerous duct. We study also morphology, biochemistry, and uh, photochemistry of cell cultures in vitro. We perform also Raman optical biopsies on animal models in vivo. So we can summarize our uh, innovation in the following way. Uh, Raman biomarkers, Raman optical biopsy, uh, virtual Raman histopathology, and real-time in vivo neurosurgical Raman methods that are used in our laboratory.
In conclusion, the key of tumor diagnosis based on lung spectroscopy is to find the difference between normal and cancerous samples. Therefore, a variety of Raman spectral data methods have been developed to improve the diagnosis and recognition rate from a multivariate uh, statistical methods to classical machine learning methods and finally to deep learning. Especially facing a large amount of data, deep learning can yield a better diagnosis and recognition rate. And now we would like to switch to another topic. We would like to learn uh, on uh, uh, artificial intelligence effect on democracy, freedom, politics, social life, uh, all these topics that are not directly related to research. So we would like to ask how uh, artificial intelligence threatens democracy and freedom and uh, topics related to this one. Let's start from, for, uh, from risks of artificial intelligence related to this social life. First, lack of uh, artificial intelligence transparency and explainability. Second, social manipulations through artificial intelligence algorithm. Three, possible social surveillance with AI technology. Four, lack of data privacy using AI tools. Five, uh, possible biases due to AI, socioeconomic inequality as a result of AI, weakening ethics and goodwill because of AI, financial crises and pandemia brought about by AI algorithms, uh, loss of human influence, and controllable self-aware uh, artificial intelligence. What do, we, what do we mean by lack of artificial intelligence transparency? Uh, artificial intellig uh, intelligence and deep learning models can be difficult to understand, even for those that work directly with the technology. This leads to a lack of transparency for how and why artificial intelligence comes to its conclusions, creating a lack of explanation for what data AI algorithm use and why they may make biased or unsafe decisions. This concern have given rise to a use of uh, explainable AI but there is still a long way before transparent AI systems becomes common practice. Um, I would like to mention that this task to uh, develop explainable artificial intelligence is rather um, impossible or very difficult because uh, this is a complex matter of AI and it's not easy to uh, produce such a friendly uh, software uh, to that would be uh, that will be understood by understood by all people. Some people say that uh, there is a serious danger that we will get AI systems smarter than us fairly soon, and that these things might get bad motives and take control. Uh, this isn't just a science fiction problem. This is a serious problem uh, that's probably going to arrive fairly soon, and politicians need to be thinking about what to do about it now. So how to mitigate the risks of artificial intelligence? Uh, some of the proposals are given here. Develop legal reg regulations. Create organizational artificial intelligence standards. Make AI part of company culture and discussion. AI certain regulation has been a main focus for 
Dozens of countries and now the US and the European Union are creating more clear cut measures to manage the rising sophistication of artificial intelligence. Uh, however, although this means certain AI technologies could eventually be banned, it doesn't prevent societies from exploring the field. Create organizational uh, artificial intelligence standards. Preserving the spirit of experimentation is essential for countries looking to innovate and keep up with the rest of the world, blah, blah, blah. And uh, we think that uh, this measure seems to be uh, very difficult to uh, produce uh, radical changes in this matter. Um, we decide what we want to use AI and what we don't, what it is acceptable and what it is not, and different countries are going to make different choices. Parole, 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 words, words, words. Even less clear is the measure related to making AI part of the company culture and discussion. So to summarize, the reality is likely to be much more complex. And here I will present a few of the possible benefits and dangers uh, artificial intelligence may post. Here we have the list of potential benefits and potential dangers. Uh, in potential dangers, I would like to underline uh, the point two, potential for bias and discrimination as a result of the data set on which the AI is trained. We don't know which AI data set is good, which one is wrong. So this, is, this belongs only to the people preparing these algor algorithms and potential to create misinformation as well as um, a violation of law and regulations. So there are many, many potential dangers related to artificial intelligence. Thank you very much for your attention.